Let's start with covering the difference between classes and types in Kotlin. When we hear these two words in Kotlin, they might be used interchangeably. A type describes properties a set of objects may share, which tells the compiler how the programmer intends to use the data. A Kotlin class is just an implementation of the type. While a class is always a type, a type is not necessarily a class. We're going to start with creating the class called Sloth. I'm not really sure why I decided to go with Sloth, but that's what we went with. These are some of my great many 3AM ideas. It turns out there's like a two-finger Sloths and three-fingered Sloths, and uh, apparently three-fingered Sloths are a lot faster than two-fingered Sloths. And we know that all Sloths eat and sleep. Um, I uh, very much aspire for my life to be like a Sloth. This Sloth doesn't do very much. And uh, I'm sure we all want his life on certain days. OK, so we have this class. But is a sloth a class or a type? Well, actually, it's both, as the sloth is the implementation of the class, but it also names the type. So luckily, as of Kotlin 1.3, we can just use fun main without any uh, arguments that we usually see in Java or in any Kotlin class before 1.3. Let's go ahead and declare our value to be sloth of the type sloth. Our sloth value declares the variable to hold an instance of the sloth class. Nullability actually makes this kind of interesting, because when we add a question mark to the class type sloth, we're actually showing that our sloth value can also be declared as a nullable type. Every Kotlin class can be used to construct at least two types. The distinction between types and classes can actually be traced back to programming language theory. But we're not going to worry about that. That's, you know, as with many generic collections you may see in Kotlin, such as lists, sets, and maps, type arguments can be inferred by the Kotlin compiler as long as there are objects in the collection. One exception to this rule is when you start initializing empty collections, or in our case, empty lists. There are actually two ways that you can do this in Kotlin. One way is that you can call the list of and initialize that empty list of, and then to the right of the sloth list, you'll just initialize the type there. The other way that you can do it is not initializing the type to the left of the value in the colon, but rather using the list of and then indicating the generic type that you're trying to use in your list of. Now let's say that we had a slew of sloths, or I don't know, um, a sloth crew, and we're going to have Jerry, Bay, and um, let's say Alex. So with this sloth crew, we can just go ahead and have a party, and we can feed them all at once. What we can do is feed the whole crew by creating a function that takes a parameter that takes a list of sloths. And of course, once we get through the crew, we can just iterate through every single one and then feed them individually. We're going to go ahead and print to the console that we actually did feed them since we didn't actually write an implementation for the E function. All right, we have the whole crew eating leaves. This is all fine and dandy, but what if we wanted a panda crew to also join this party? So let's go ahead and create a panda class. It'll take a name just like the sloth, and then I guess it'll also eat and sleep too. The problem is, if we tried to create a list of panda crews, or a list of pandas, a crew of pandas, one of those things, but we have a crew of pandas, and the problem is if we try to use the same function, we're going to see that the compiler is actually going to yell at us because it's expecting a list of sloths instead of a list of pandas. And this is kind of a, you know, kind of a conundrum. What we'll have to do is feed a crew of pandas in a very similar manner that we feed a crew of sloths. While we're able to feed both sloths and pandas, it's kind of unsatisfactory because what we really have is repeated code. This is where generic functions really come in to help out. Since pandas and sloths both eat and sleep and, you know, they're kind of hairy, we can go ahead and create a super type class called mammal, which consists of a name and two functions for eating and sleeping. That way we can consolidate some of this code and we'll extend both the sloth and the panda class with mammal. If you're using a super type and inheriting from that class, you're going to have to denote that class with an open. It's a little different from Java where 
we have public. By default, uh, all these classes in Kotlin tend to be final. Now that we kind of created a hierarchy, we can actually delete some of this repetitive code and we can use one of the existing functions that we already have and use the type mammal. You're able to feed in both sloths and pandas for the feed crew function, even though the list only takes the mammal type. This is kind of interesting because if we actually click into the list implementation in the, in the Kotlin collections class, we see that there's this interesting notation in the generic parameter for list called out e. This is called a covariance. A covariance class is a generic class where the subtyping is preserved. Making a type parameter a covariant class makes it possible to be able to pass values as function arguments even when the type arguments don't exactly match the ones in the function definition. Covariance only goes one way. We can say that a panda is a subtype of a mammal, but we can't say that a mammal is necessarily a sloth. The subtyping for the class is always preserved. Contravariance, on the other hand, is a reflection of covariance. It's kind of a mirrored version of covariance. To declare the class to be contravariant on a certain type parameter, you use the word in to consume instead of produce the element type. Let's say that we wanted to mash the whole crew together, squad, and sort the names in alphabetical order. We can actually use a comparator interface to be able to do this. Using the comparator interface, we can implement a value called compare by names and then create our own comparator right here. Both A and B are going to be the mammal types, and we're going to use the mammal names to be able to compare each other. Because we're comparing names, let's go ahead and take the first letter of the name, turn it into a character, and then compare the integer values, and we'll just sort it that way. Make it easy on ourselves. Now that we have our comparator, we can sort our squad with the sorted function, and then of course stick the comparator in there. We can iterate through the results and using Kotlin reflection we can call the print ln because otherwise it's just going to be print ln its and uh, I don't know I think it just looks nicer that way. That's it for now on generics, probably the other way around. I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, if you liked it please feel free to subscribe. If you're interested in contributing definitely reach out to us. Until next time. Thank you.